Hello, this is Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and today we're going to be talking about Movie Studio 16 Platinum and how to keyframe. So first, uh, we're just going to talk about some of the basics of keyframing. I'm going to throw out uh, this this Tech Dive logo here, and I want to show you how there's a button here called Event Pan Crop. This is a very handy button. You can also get to it by right-clicking and hitting Video Event Pan Crop. Either way, we'll bring you to this screen right here. And this is how you can zoom in on something, pull out on something, uh, re reposition something. There's all sorts of great things you can do because this F stands for the field of view. This is what you can see. And you can choke down on what you can see, depending on the resolution is how good it's going to look. But you can choke down on what you can see. You can pull back on what you can see. You can do all sorts of things with what you can see. So this is cool because not only can I just move it once per the clip but I can also animate this and I can animate it with keyframes so let's say I want it to start here and I want it to slowly get bigger by the I can go all the way to the end of this timeline here create a keyframe this is a create keyframe button if you're wondering the delete keyframe button is next to it and then it'll get rid of it But I can create a keyframe now this is a new keyframe these keyframes have exactly the same information. The field of view is in this location, and over here the field of view is in the same location. If I have this keyframe highlighted, I can zoom in or zoom out, and wherever I leave it is where it's going to slowly get to. So if I zoom out just a little bit, now we can look at this first keyframe, see how it's zoomed in, and then we can look at the second keyframe, see how it's more zoomed out. Now I can watch it slowly zoom out over time because it'll take the amount of time it takes to get from this keyframe to this keyframe, it'll slowly transition there. So let's watch it. Now slowly zooming out. That is how to animate things with keyframes, in essence. So let's talk about this a little deeper. You can right click it, and you can uh, do a f more of a fast, more of a slow, more of a smooth transition. This is just something to kind of change the subtleties of it. It's, you're not going to see a major difference in that, but it will kind of help help you get, if you're wanting something to kind of look snappily like it's moving across screen or more s slow or gentle, it'll help you kind of get the more perfect keyframing look you're looking for. But uh, there's there's more things you can do with keyframes too. If you add more keyframes, you can have things zoom in, zoom back out, zoom back in zoom back out you can add another keyframe zoom in and as many keyframes as you add wherever you add them depending on the amount of time between them will can depend on how fast it zooms in and it zooms out see you can just make things dance along the screen like that now uh, let's recreate the tech dive logo with a PNG so I'm gonna add a solid color from my media generators and then uh, my PNG, this PNG has no back. So you can see that checkered screen behind it. That means there is no back behind it. So uh, I can put it against any color here. If I go to this color editing properties, I can change the color. And you can still see the Tech Dive logo behind it, even if I make it something atrocious like this nasty 90s hot pink. So what I can do also is I can make this dance around. But because it's a PNG, you can imagine there's a lot more possibilities. Oh, first, I want to address this. A lot of people ask me questions about this. Uh, when you slide off the screen and you're like, why is it disappearing right there? Okay, do you see how it's disappearing off the screen there? That's because it's leaving the field of view. So if it's leaving the field of view, then you're going to lose it no matter where it appears to be on this screen. The field of view in relative to this matters a whole lot. So if it's off the field of view, it's off the screen. So, if I want to move this around, I can simply make a keyframe, change the position. You can imagine how this could be tracking over someone's face. This is a way to kind of manually track things around, uh, have text move around on screen. I'll show you more about animations in just a second. First, I want to tell you that Bates are masking is right here. It's a much more complicated way to do tracking and cutting and masking, and you can even make text track. I I want you to know that that is there is a way to do that in Vegas. It's not manual, but uh, I also want you to know that uh, I, this is not the tutorial to do that. I'm still working on it. It's quite much more of a bear to do a little bit more advanced. So uh, manual tracking though is quite simple. So here's something really cool I want you to know about this. If you go to titles and text you can actually animate 
all this stuff. If you look at everything, all of these have an animation clock. And the animation clock means that you can animate each and every one of these effects. You can change the background color over time. If I want it to slowly turn red from see-through, I can go here, I can go to animate this, this background color, and I can uh, create a keyframe at the end of this, create a keyframe, just like what we've done before, and then I can change the color. Something absurd. And then you'll notice over here, Ah, the color doesn't change, and here's why. I didn't change the opacity. You also have to change the opacity. But you can change the opacity to the background. Notice that the background's really small. You can animate the text tracking. You can animate any of these things. Um, so the thing I want you to come away with is realizing that you can animate any of this, these things. You can add uh, keyframes for... Uh, the space tracking and by the end of it have the tracking really expand a whole lot. Then you can watch it. You have to be careful what keyframe you do what on. Then you can watch it slowly expand. see how this, this looks kind of atrocious but you can see what you can do is actually just move things edit things have things slowly move around the screen highlight randomly add backgrounds randomly had add, add uh, uh, more words add less words you can change anything with a keyframe meaning you can really bring your work to life by having things just subtly change move around screen track over things you can in a pictures you can put an apple over somebody's head as they're walking around there's all sorts of things you can do and you can do those things with animations and keyframes you can do the same thing with video effects cookie cutter is a really easy one to show you um, this effect with so I'm gonna drop cookie cutter here this is a whole nother tutorial within itself how to use cookie cutter but just a quick look you can see the effects of cookie cutter really easily as you're moving around if I wanted to animate this I could just add another keyframe here at the end or in the middle or wherever I want it and have it kind of James Bond eye over to the other side of the sample text. So now you can see this circle travels from right to left. You can start doing all sorts of interesting things with these animations. So that is how to use keyframes. I had the idea to do this tutorial because a subscriber asked me to do so. So if you have an idea for a tutorial, please comment below. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more. If you're new to video editing, you're welcome to check out my Skillshare lessons through my Skillshare link. That would help me out a lot, and it would also start you on video editing. I also have lots of tutorials like that here on this channel. Uh, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.